When a person disappears, their family is left in limbo. Each case has countless theories and possibilities, and families often have to wade through months, even years of investigative work to find the truth. Modern investigative techniques bring hope to families who have been waiting decades for answers. Number 5 The disappearance of 44-year-old Denise Jarvis from Kingswood, Bristol has received minimal news coverage across the UK. Several high-profile disappearances have occurred in the last few years, yet Denise's case is largely forgotten. Denise's family described her as a bright and intelligent woman who shared a close bond with her family. She would obtained her degree from the University of West England and was looking forward to where this would take her. In the weeks before her disappearance, Denise was exhibiting bizarre behavior. She had been living with her mother, Bernadette Lake, and her father for six months. And her mother had noticed something changing within her daughter. It was clear that Denise was struggling with her mental health, and her parents gently pushed her to see a GP to get support. On August 3, 2022, Denise packed five bags and left the family home in Kingswood, Bristol, following an argument with her family. According to Bernadette, Denise then went to Southey Park. Denise failed to arrive home that evening and was subsequently reported missing. The Avon and Somerset police began their investigation, and while out searching in Southey Park, they found two of Denise's bags. Since August 3rd, there's been no activity on her phone or bank accounts, which her parents find odd. Denise was described as outgoing and always kept in touch with her friends. In February of 2023, the Avon and Somerset police released new CCTV footage of Denise in the days before she disappeared. According to the police, the footage was captured on July 26, 2022, and showed Denise wearing her distinctive gray sleeveless coat. Investigators have spent months combing through CCTV footage of Denise's last movements, and have interviewed over 90 people. Rivers, lakes, and forests have all been searched, but there's been no sign of Denise. In early 2023, local newspapers reported that Denise had allegedly been spotted in Kingswood, Bristol. In March of 2023, Cornwall Live said that Denise had been seen sleeping on the streets in Cornwall. The Avon and Somerset police have yet to comment on this sighting, and nothing has been confirmed. Anyone with information is asked to call 101, quoting incident number 5222-186-376. Number 4 78-year-old Herbert Leroy Allen was truly making the most of his retirement. He had a long and illustrious career as a tool and die maker for General Motors in Cleveland, Ohio, and was excited to take life at a slower pace. Herbert lived alone as he had divorced in 1994, following a 44-year marriage. According to reports, Herbert was cruel and physically abusive towards his wife, which led her to file for divorce. Herbert looked like any other retiree to the outside world, but deep down, there was a dark streak. In 1996, Herbert was at the center of a bizarre court case. He was being charged with grand theft, with the courts alleging that he'd stolen $16,000 from his brother's life insurance policy. His brother, who had dementia, eventually settled with his brother out of court after Herbert paid some of the money back. As a result, Herbert lived a more solitary lifestyle and only had a handful of friends. Herbert and his friends would meet at the Vasa Lodge each week to have breakfast together. This outing was the highlight of his week, so when he failed to show up in November of 2006, his friends knew something was wrong. Several weeks passed without contact, and in December of 2006, the case would take on a new twist. Officers in New Mexico pulled over a 1995 silver minivan registered to Herbert Allen. But the driver wasn't Herbert. It was Terry White who claimed that Herbert was his landlord and that he had lent his van to him. Not only had Terry White been using Herbert's van, but he'd also been using Herbert's credit card to finance his trip. Investigators knew something was amiss and decided to interview Herbert to get his side of the story. When they arrived at his home on East 340th Street, it was empty, and a small note was pinned to the fridge with a magnet. In the note, Herbert explained that he was going on a trip and asked that his tenants take care of his business while he was gone. The Cleveland Police Department was alerted to Herbert's disappearance, and that's when they learned that Herbert had last been seen on November 23, 2006, in the 1300 block of Clear Air Road. 
Investigators also discovered that Herbert had evicted Terry White in November of 2006. Red splotches and a weapon were found in Herbert's 1995 minivan, but this wasn't enough evidence to bring about a conviction. The prevailing theory is that Herbert and Terry got into an argument or altercation following Terry's eviction. Anyone with information is asked to contact Detective Albert Oliver of the Cleveland Police Department at 216-623-5262, quoting case number 0605013222. Number 3 27-year-old Lakeisha Taylor was described as a bright and vivacious woman. In 2008, Lakeisha and her three children lived with Lakeisha's cousin Sandy Stevenson in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Earlier that year, Lakeisha had separated from her husband and was slowly trying to rebuild her life. Sandy described Lakeisha as the life of the party. While Lakeisha loved to party and socialize, she was also a dedicated mother to her three children. July 13, 2008 started like any other for Lakeisha and Sandy. Lakeisha woke up early and got her children ready for school before sending them on their way. Lakeisha returned home to complete jobs around the house and sometime that morning, Sandy suggested that the two should get some breakfast. Sandy left their shared home, promising Lakeisha that she would return soon. When Sandy returned home, the house was eerily quiet. There were no echoes of Lakeisha's voice. It was empty. As Sandy moved around the house, she found Lakeisha's clothes neatly laid out on the bed, and they'd been freshly washed and ironed. After leaving the bedroom, Sandra heard a faint trickle in the bathroom. Lakeisha had drawn herself a bath, and the water was still warm, but there was no Lakeisha. Her handbag, money, phone, and ID were all left behind. When Sandra failed to find her cousin at the shared home, she called the Lake Charles Police Department to report her missing. Sandra and investigators were baffled by Lakeisha's disappearance. Sandy had been gone less than an hour and Lakeisha had mysteriously disappeared. From the outset, Lakeisha's family did not believe that she'd left of her own volition. It was extremely out of character for Lakeisha to leave her children behind. And in the days after her disappearance, she failed to contact her family. According to reports, several people of interest have been named, but no arrests have materialized. Lakeisha's ex-husband is also considered a suspect. Rumors swirled around Lake Charles, with the locals stating that they'd heard rumors of Lakeisha being buried in a nearby cemetery. In 2010, the Lake Charles Police Department received a bizarre call, and the caller stated that Lakeisha's body could be found at a property on North Bank Street. According to reports, the Lake Charles Police Department and the Louisiana State University Faces Lab, or Forensic Anthropology and Computer Enhancement Services Lab, extensively searched the area. Still, it failed to find any sign of Lakeisha. Lakeisha's brother, Emily, told KPLC that the Lake Charles Police Department had received bizarre calls concerning his sister's disappearance. On one occasion, an anonymous caller began reeling off information when they abruptly stopped. The anonymous caller, who claimed to have all the answers, never called the tip line back. Lakeisha's family believes that she met with foul play and that somebody in the community knows what happened to her. Anyone with information is asked to contact Captain Kevin Kirkham of the Lake Charles Police Department at 337-491-1311, quoting case number 085724. Number 2 34-year-old Anne Lynette Turner was at a crossroads in her life. She had just broken off a 12-year relationship with her long-term boyfriend and was beginning to navigate her new life. Her friends and family described her as a happy and outgoing woman. Anne also faced a different type of hardship, cancer. In the months before her disappearance, she'd begun cancer treatment which caused her to lose her hair. Anne didn't let this dull her sparkle and started wearing wigs. In June of 2008, Anne was days away from starting a new job at the Bush Gardens restaurant in Williamsburg, Virginia, just 20 miles north of her home. Unfortunately, Anne would never get a chance to show the world her cooking skills, as she mysteriously vanished one breezy June morning. Reports indicate that Anne was last seen on June 23, 2008, at her home on 13th Street in Newport News, Virginia. That morning, she left her home at around 9.30 a.m. never to be seen again. When Anne failed to show up to her job as a cook, her family reported her missing to the Newport News Police Department. 
Anne's disappearance hit the local news and within days, the Newport News police had a potential lead. Witnesses recalled seeing Anne with her ex-boyfriend at a Walmart store on Armory Drive in Franklin, Virginia, 60 miles from Newport News on June 27th, five days after being reported missing. Unfortunately, the CCTV tape from that date had already been taped over when investigators arrived. Anne's family told investigators that Anne's ex-boyfriend had been physically abusive to her in their relationship. It took Anne weeks to build up the confidence to finally leave her boyfriend, and when they had separated, she went into hiding. Anne's boyfriend has maintained his innocence, and no evidence proved these theories. There's been no activity on Anne's bank account or phone. Anyone with information is asked to contact SVU Detective Heather Fronberger of the Newport News Police Department at 757-247-2500, quoting case number 2008-56681. Number 1 June 2009 was said to be a peaceful and relaxing month for the Madsons. 72-year-old Julia Madsen, her husband Edward, and their children, Aileen and Guy, and their families had a two-week holiday planned in Berkeley Township, New Jersey. When the time came, the families hastily packed their bags, threw them into the car, and headed to their summer home in South Seaside Park. Julia and Edward had been married for over 50 years, and they were enjoying their peaceful retirement. The perfect family holiday would quickly become a nightmare when the family's matriarch mysteriously disappeared. On June 25, 2009, the Madsen family spent another fun-filled day together before retiring to the summer home. Julia decided to walk along the beach just 15 yards from the property as the warm breeze blew in along the coastline. At around 7 p.m., Julia kissed her husband goodbye and set off down the warm sands of the Jersey Shore. An hour later, Julia's family realized that she still hadn't come home from what should have been a short walk. By 9 p.m., the Berkeley Township Police Department were at the Madsen summer home to take a missing person report. Julia's family had searched every inch of the beach to no avail. That evening, investigators, divers, and search and rescue teams scoured the Jersey Shore but found no sign of Julia. According to her family, she hated swimming and intensely disliked the water. Julia's family also told investigators that she had Alzheimer's disease and that the disease had been progressing in the months before her disappearance. Julia's daughter, Aileen, told the media that her mother still had a solid grip on reality and was aware of who she was and her family. This was the first and only time that she'd gotten lost or wandered off. Multiple area searches were conducted, but no sign of Julia has ever been found. Her family holds a vigil each year to remember her. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Berkeley Township Police Department at 732-341-6600, quoting case number 0917-60089. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But my name is Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.